In this video, we're going to talk about evidence for continental drift. Uh, continental drift is the idea that the continents are drifting across the Earth. And it was originally proposed by a German scientist named Alfred Wegener. And he proposed the idea of continental drift. However, he didn't have a how. So when he would propose his idea, scientists would immediately say, well, how is this happening? And he didn't have an answer for it. So it initially didn't get a lot of credibility and support. However, other scientists were finding things around the Earth that would soon begin to support his idea for continental drift. The first one was puzzle fit. As maps became more prevalent and more accurate, people noticed that the continents fit together like a puzzle. Uh, the best example is thinking about South America and Africa. South America kind of fits into the armpit of Africa there. And so people said, well, those kind of look like they go together. And North America and Europe kind of maybe go together. And there's some other spots where they thought maybe they kind of, look to, they kind of fit together like a puzzle. The reason why they are not an exact fit anymore is because of erosion, right? Think about just like going back to the puzzle analogy. If you give a puzzle to your little brother or sister and they chew on it and beat it up and eat on it and then you try to put it together, your pieces aren't going to fit quite like they used to. Next, scientists started comparing information about fossils. And what they found was the same fossil found on two or more different continents. This is a big deal because they were finding giant dinosaur fossils on two different continents. So if you have South America and Africa and they share this same fossil, so the fossil is going to be the same species of animal, also it's going to be during the same time period. Now a giant dinosaur cannot swim across the Atlantic Ocean. And so the only uh, actually, there were two, two ideas. One was the continents were together, and then they split apart. However, they didn't have a mechanism for it, so people weren't really sure about it. And the other idea were, were these giant land bridges that connected uh, different continents together. However, they couldn't find any evidence for that one either, so it was a bit of a stalemate. Next are rock formations. Now, if you don't know a whole lot about rocks, if you look at two of them, you know, they both are, this one's white with black specks, and this one's white with black specks, or this one's tan, and this one's tan, they look alike. However, rocks are actually, have very unique chemical signatures in them. They're almost kind of like a human's DNA. The only way to get the same rock type found on two or more continents is if those rocks were, came from the same pool of magma. So as the magma comes up and uh, lithifies into a rock, it has a unique chemical structure and age that you can't find anywhere else on Earth. It has to come from the same spot. So what they found were here in like Africa and India, they found rocks that were the same age and the same chemical structure. And they concluded that for that to happen, they have to come from the same source of rock uh, or the same magma and thus, and then since, have split apart. Then we have evidence from glaciers, and this one is really significant because with uh, fossils and mountain forming or rock formation, those take millions of years to happen, and so scientists can't go out and just see, oh, there's a mountain being formed, or oh, look, here's an ocean being formed, or there's a fossil uh, being created right now in front of my eyes. However, we can see glaciers, and we can see the evidence they leave behind. And so what people, what scientists found was evidence found in places that are too warm for glaciers. Uh, parts of Africa, South America, India. These places are really warm now. However, they were finding glacial deposits and they were finding glacial markings on rocks. When a glacier rides over, or slides over a rock, it just rubs it almost to like a mirror finish. It's very, very smooth. And so they were finding these glacial deposits, and they knew they were glacial, um, it was evidence of a glacier. However, the area they were finding them in was way too hot. And so, again, they said, well, continents could be moving from warmer sections of the Earth to colder sections of the Earth, or there could have been uh, dramatic climate change. But this was a, a, a good piece of evidence because it was something that scientists could compare, compare it to now because it was a process they were familiar with. 
Finally, we have paleomagnetism. And you can break this word down if you know your uh, Latin roots or Greek roots. Paleo means ancient, and magnetism refers to magnets, so they're essentially ancient magnets. And what they are are paired magnetic stripes at seafloor spreading areas. So in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, if you look at a map, there's a giant uh, mountain chain. It's the longest in the world. And this is where the, con uh, the continental plates are separating. Or sorry, oceanic plates are separating. And as they separate, as the magma cools, the rocks in it point north uh, if they have any iron in them because iron points north. Well, then they found that some of the rocks were pointing south, and then they were pointing north again, and then they were pointing south again. And then they compared it across the, the, the seafloor spreading ridge, and they found that they paired up perfectly. So here in my picture, we have purple, black, purple, black, purple, black, purple, black, all the way out. And the same thing is true across the Atlantic Ocean, except it's going north, south, north, south. Um, but what they couldn't figure out was why would some rocks point north and then some rocks point south? And that's kind of an interesting question that uh, we'll talk about in class later on. And that finishes our notes for evidence of continental drift.